Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a very different topic for my channel. I don't like to tread into this territory of drama. However, there are two reasons I'm making this video. One is that we're going through that phase that we go through every every year where people get excited about the nostalgia of 2018 and start listing things from the previous year. So, you know, you'll see all these, you know, best of makeup, all, all of that. Uh, but number two, I have personally felt a bit embarrassed myself to be in this beauty community at times. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, like, it's a, it's a silly thing, and I'm not saying we should feel embarrassed. I'm just saying that I've been so shocked when people have approached me, people who do not wear makeup, men who do not wear makeup, and come up to me and are like, oh yeah, aren't you? You're into that beauty thing, right? So, uh, this Jeffree Star guy. <laughs> and stuff like that. It's just kind of been a really wild ride. So my goal for this video is to talk about the five most embarrassing makeup releases of 2018. There were a surprisingly large amount to choose from, but what I wanted to pick ultimately were the the releases that I feel the beauty community would pretty much agree with me on, and, and we, we can all, you know, share this opinion. Uh, and also those that I can maybe attempt some constructive criticism. I really don't like attacking people, and that's something I don't like in certain drama channels, although I do like some. I think that, for example, Petty Page seems to be really quite balanced in her videos. Some are just really nasty and just attack people in ways that I just don't find endearing in the slightest. But with all five of these examples, I think we can either say ways in which this could have been prevented, uh, there can be a lesson learned going forward, and then, you know, some just obvious train wrecks. All right, number five on my list is Max Aaliyah Collection. <sighs> this should have been such a good release. Not only have people been begging for this for years, Aaliyah is one of the best singers of all time. She had such a tragic death, and it's just so sad that, you know, her, her, her music was kind of locked into this one time. I think it would be great if we can bring it towards this generation so they have more options than just Mo Bamba. She was just really somebody that was, it was hard not to have immense amounts of respect for, and it seemed like Mac would be such a good company to come out with this collaboration. That's why people wanted it. So then what does Mac do? They go and release this collection that just, it just doesn't feel very inspired at all. And I think the biggest kicker is they come out with a bronzer that's probably most appropriate for NC20 skin. In an Aaliyah collection. And because of this, a lot of people ended up not buying anything from the collection, myself included, because I really feel like even if I had been really interested in some of the products, I really didn't want to send this message that that's okay to do. It's really, it's not. If you are celebrating a woman of color, her life, her legacy, then you've got to come out with a bronzer that complements people who are of her same skin tone. Are you kidding? It's just, it's baffling. Oh, it's just so hard not to be massively lit down and <laughs> experience secondhand embarrassment. And to be clear, you know, I really do love Mac. I think that it, it's Mac. It's Mac Cosmetics. Mac is... Mac is Mac. You know, time will really go to show how some of these other brands hold up, but Mac is... Mac will always be... iconic. Mac and Amelia Fart. We'll give her that, too. All right, number four on my list. This one is actually really hard for me to talk about. This is Halo Beauty. The reason this is hard for me to talk about is because I don't think Tati herself is a, a very controversial influencer, just in general, you know, in, in minor ways. You, I'm sure you can nitpick some things. Um, but I think that as a whole, I think she really tries. And I really respect that. I think she tries so hard to be unbiased, to, you know, give people reviews at different price points. I think she tries really hard. So I do respect her. However, Halo Beauty was also a product that was released and was really hard not to experience secondhand embarrassment about. See, the problem with this whole situation is that Tati announced she was coming out with a product. She said, you know, it's coming soon, it's gonna be something I'm so excited about, blah, blah, blah. 
And so we in the makeup community are all thinking, okay, it could be makeup, but it's probably skincare. Nobody guessed vitamins. Not one person was thinking, yeah, she's gonna come out with the vitamins line. And the reason for this is because she doesn't talk about vitamins. It was just so out of left field that it's just... And the real kicker for me, the, the reason that this is so incredibly hard for me is because I understand why she released that. I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, get it. You know, there's this whole alternative world, and to be honest with you, I used to definitely be a part of it, where you kind of believe that there's all these missing links in what we have in modern science where people could live a healthier life if they're taking all these vitamins or doing all these different things. But the thing is, for me, I thought, okay, well, I'm real interested in this. I'm going to go get a degree in nutrition, which I did. I got a master's in nutrition. And now that I have it, I would never sell you vitamins. Also part of why I'm an unemployed nutritionist. But... I can't do it. I can't do it. I would feel so dishonest selling people supplements because <clears throat> the science behind them is very, very limited. So to be saying, okay, we're selling these hair and skin supplements, I get it. I get the intent behind it and I think that it was good hearted, but it's lacking the science to support it. And so many people pointed this out and this is where it became this drama channel thing. And I do understand that some people are enjoying it and some people are seeing results. That's great. I'm very happy for you. But just for me, with everything that I've learned, with holding the degrees that I have, I just, I, I just can't, I, I can't help but shake my head at the whole situation. Now, I'm very happy for Tati. It seems like she has really bounced back. I know a lot of people had said they weren't going to watch her, but did come back because again, she makes really good content. She's really good at her job of being a beauty guru. But again, I think that you know, this is one of those situations where I would only say you could have prevented this by either showing us you were interested in vitamins, like at one point, just once. You know, when you are a YouTuber, when you're a beauty guru, you carry a brand whether you like it or not. And when you decide to do something that's so from left field, it doesn't resonate with people. You know, it's like somebody playing a flat note in a song. It just it doesn't vibe with us. And I think that was the whole, the whole source of the Halo Beauty issue. You know, it's, it's so funny because if you think about it, if you were to remove that from Tati completely, if somebody else came out with it, it would not have been met with the same criticisms that Tati received. Let's move on to number three. I decided to go with the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation incident. Beauty Blender was a close runner-up, but I will say this. I think that when Beauty Blender came out with their foundation line, yeah, it was, it was extremely embarrassing, just like the Tarte line, but I kind of understand what they were trying to do, so I'll give them that. Like, they were trying to make this medium shade range. I don't think they did it extremely well, and certainly the photos seemed a bit embarrassing, but Tarte wins. There's no way that you can look at Tarte's Shape Tape promo photos and not be embarrassed. And again, this is that situation I'm talking about where, you know, I don't feel like I'm attacking one person because clearly this is the company, which means clearly there were 10, 20, 50, 200, 200, 200 people behind this. 200 people looked at this promo photo and, th and thought to themselves, yes, that's great. Let's release that. And this is why I personally stopped buying from Tarte. It's just that they make such good products, they really do, but there's a message that's inherent in releasing a photo like this, much less a foundation line, that you are saying, look who we care the most about. And that's embarrassing. For us, in 2018, people who want equality, we want inclusivity. We don't want to be supporting a brand or a foundation that clearly caters that much to only one skin color. And then Tarte actually tried to say that that was an appropriate shade range. Hold on, I gotta collect myself. An appropriate shade range for all skin tones during the winter. Oh gosh, Tarte needs to learn to shut their mouths when they make a mistake and actually accept responsibility. And I think that's something that we've seen from them so many times. You know, when that whole issue happened in 2017 with the, uh, photo they posted to social media, they blamed an intern, just accept their responsibility, then people are more likely to say, okay, we can see that you are learning and growing 
you know, learning from your mistakes. And again, this one also really makes me sad because Tarte was, again, one of my absolute favorite brands. Now, in, in all fairness, I understand a lot of you that watch my channel still buy from Tarte, and I get it. I personally don't buy from Tarte because even though I have this little tiny micro-influence, it's still a micro influence and I want to use my influence to promote brands that I do feel are more inclusive. Number two on my list is the Kat Von D fetish collection. Okay, so I really have lost all respect for Kat Von D. I realized that the last time I said this in a video, it created a, a, a low, little tiny bit of drama because I guess not everybody feels this way, but for anybody who has missed it, uh, not only is Kat Von D not vaccinating her baby, which is a serious issue. But beyond that, she has been so anti-Semitic, and it was something I didn't even know about until all of this happened, but now that I've seen the receipts, there's just no way. There is just no way that I can ever support her. Are you kidding? My heritage is Jewish. I cannot ever support Kat Von D. But again, this video is not as much about the people. We already know how everybody feels about Kat Von D at this point. Uh, instead, it's about this release, because this release followed the anti-vaccination scandal. And you might think, okay, well, she really needs to come out with a good collection to try to win back anybody who's on the fence, right? Instead, Kat Von D released this fetish collection that had the worst reviews <laughs> that I have seen makeup have in a long time. It's 2018. Makeup is easy to formulate these days, or at least we've made very, uh, very massive advancements in formulating makeup. So that Maybelline and L'Oreal and CoverGirl and all these brands at the drugstore have come out with good products. And yet, the fetish collection apparently was horrendous. Now again, I didn't try it, so I'm basing this part of this video entirely on people's reactions, but just <laughs> the reviews were so fun to read. Number one on my list. Little old Laura Lee. And again, this is specifically about releases. So the colorful palette release and her transition into Ulta that was absolutely destroyed by her racist tweets. You know, when I heard about this happening, I, I really didn't follow Laura Lee, but I heard about it happening, I heard there were tweets, and I just kind of figured, ugh, it's so annoying and frustrating and just, what year do we live in that people are still tweeting the n-word? You know, come on. Then I read the tweets, and I think, I, sus I assume, this is how many of us experience this situation. Her tweets were not kind of inappropriate. That would be way too much of an understatement. They were actually really quite vicious. But as far as the release, the way this happened is this information came to light and this was right before Laura Lee's palettes were in BoxyCharm. Now I know a lot of people have mixed feelings on the way that BoxyCharm handled this, but I think that in all fairness, there really is a decent amount of preparation that goes into these types of things. So I'm sure this was months of planning and by the time this scandal hit, it was really too late to cancel the whole boxes going out thing. But wow, the reaction of the community, because something that's funny to me about the beauty community is that you, you kind of have the beauty community and the subscription box community, and they kind of overlap a little bit, but it's actually not that much. Well, this one certainly did overlap. I mean, this was not only the beauty community, this was the drama community related to the beauty community over here with the beauty subscription community, and yet somehow, bam, they collided. And a lot of people reacted by unsubscribing to BoxyCharm. A lot of people wrote BoxyCharm and let them know. And I think that, uh, correct me if I'm mistaken because I didn't experience any of this, but I do think that uh, BoxyCharm sent some replacements to some people until it became too overwhelming, which is fair. And in all truth, if BoxyCharm even did that, I think I respect them for that. That was certainly something they didn't need to do, and I'm sure it cost them thousands of dollars. You know, shipping isn't free. Some people think that it is. It is not free to ship at all. <laughs> but then add to that the Alta release. I mean, her name was printed in the Alta flyers. I got it in my own mailbox. I read it, Laura Lee coming soon. Nope, she ruined it for herself. I'm just done with this sympathetic allowing of this type of behavior. No, you want, a, you want an inclusive world. You want a, a, an equal world. You gotta demand it. At some point, you gotta demand it. So much credit to Alta. Alta demanded it, and I respect them tremendously. Ooh, Alta has grown so close to my heart through their actions this year. I think they've done they've done better than Sephora, who still carries Kat Von D. 
Alright guys, so that's my top five most embarrassing releases of 2018. Whew! What a messy year. Here's hoping 2019 is a little less this, right? Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video or if you want me to never touch this type of topic again. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.